sought information for a living. That is to say that ever since he returned from Korea, after having served with the armed forces, he had been working as a private investigator in Montreal. William Hamilton, a rich industrialist, had gotten in touch with him regarding a simple vandalism issue. Nothing to write home about. Not worth hiring a private eye either, just so he can drive for hours on rough roads. But that's how it had always been. The client pays, Carl gets it done. They had set up to meet at the general store, his client's business. Well, actually, the entire village had William Hamilton's name written all over it. or snowed in, it was customary around these parts to close them off. But it was also customary to ignore those signs entirely and drive there anyway. was meeting his client in a store near this area. He was on the right track. Hamilton never mentioned a road blocking barrier. Why was it needed here in the back of beyond? That would, however, be a mystery for another day. Carl had waited long enough for someone to come and raise it. Still not a soul in sight. There was no point in waiting any longer. Carl had to figure this one out by himself. Quebec and its inexhaustible resources. The province of Quebec sits on an inexhaustible abundance of natural resources. Why not take advantage of this? Our valuable minerals could travel the world and reach places as far as Dallas, USA. Get involved and invest now. Quebec's economic might will be awakened. At the heart of the wilderness, the north is swarming with wolves, caribous, bears, partridges, foxes, snowy ovals, and hordes of other majestic creatures that are every bit the equals of Africa's wildlife. We are the Africa of America. Come discover the north and experience a genuine white jungle. The country of Manistan and its people wish to see you very soon. Hamilton no doubt knew who managed the barrier. Carl wanted to give him a call, but that would have been too easy though, as sure enough the line was acting up. two picnic tables at this gate.
Hamilton is waiting for Carl in the general store. It was time for him to get down to business. Hamilton enjoyed a lavish country house built in the very heart of the northern forests, not too far from here. The local populace was divided when it came to the affluent man. Some saw a wealthy philanthropist dedicated to improving the region's economy. Others an aging Englishman who would do anything to further his fortunes. And those ones hated him enough to go on about scheming against him. Hamilton had recently acquired a few local businesses, but the last straw was the reopening of a mine, which gave rise to a wave of protests and threats from the Cree people. Given these circumstances, Carl reckoned that a good number of people must be feeling compelled to oppose Hamilton in one way or another. So far, only the industrialist's house had been a target, but soon enough, Carl thought, the target would become the man himself. to get out of there. The cold and the pain required urgent care. wondered how long he would have to endure this skin-stinging cold. had taken off. It was still best to check it out and leave nothing to chance. Carl needed help. It was a small locked box engraved with the letters WH. Carl thought about taking it. Nothing was to be left to chance. Such heart-wrenching Nordic poetry that was. But Carl didn't care much about flowery language. Isabel, who gave me you into everything, you disappeared in solidarity. I will defend purity against the winds and the tides against the ice and blizzard. Cold was burning Carl. He would not hold up much longer. He had to warm himself.
better than he had hoped, Carl Faubert had succeeded once more and was now on his way to new adventures. Carl, ever diligent in his work, always carried his log on him in which he scribbled down thoughts and leads alike during the course of his investigations. Case of vandalism. Son of a bloody Chicago banker, Hamilton made his own gold rush in the north of Quebec. He established the copper mine and helped his family with a small fortune drive. You can't make a fortune without breaking a few lives. That's the saying I would live by. The expansion of his copper mine certainly did not help him make new friends. Hamlet is accusing of people of attacking his estate, especially his luxurious hunting lodge somewhere in northern Chicago Mount. Yet another way to make money. The priest certainly did not. Mine's probably upset the great spirit. This vandalism case is definitely for me. It meets the eye of profession. I'm meeting Hamilton at the general store. 1553. One rank. Accident. I have been this shaken up since Korea. Who was the driver in the other car? Whoever it was, they don't have a snowboard chance in the head. If they intend to continue on foot. Besides, why did they lose the sun? Nice little bit of poetry on the back of a beautiful face. The breakfast ride was also a melancholy. A lockbox. Would it be wrong to look at Sam? Surely I would find some clue as to who the breakfast ride was. I'd still need to find the key though. All the snow coming from. I say the fall is the unpredictable season, but this is something else. Call for the man, origin monster, age 42, private detective. I'm a private detective, pays the bills along with my bedroom pension. Time of Korea. Usually I'm hired to track unfaithful husbands, but divorces are expensive. So infidelities are scars these days. William Hamlin hired me. He had a check and one complaint and promises. And I really wanted to leave Montreal. And Lake Tammy Peck is the perfect place to get away. When you want to leave, you leave. William J. Hamilton, male, Virgin Chicago, age 55, businessman. Rich industrialist, much hated and much loved. Anything that isn't his in the Manastan region, he wants. Buying is his only power. Hamilton has complained time and time again of being persecuted. Sometimes you say it's the people of Lake Tempeck, sometimes the free people. Some would say you deserve it. When you exploit people, the best you can do is stay away from them.
this deep in the country, his last hope was to find an abandoned garage or a farm by the roadside. His life depended on it. Spread out on a few acres of untouched forest, bellowing caribou, everlasting snow, and undefiled lakes. The Manistan region was no tourist hub. It was said to have been populated for millennia by Cree people, and ever since the industrial era, by the metal mining industry. stretch his legs, but he had to stay focused on the task at hand. Carl's military training had made him a very punctual man. Being late to his meeting with Hamilton was out of the question. surrender their divine nectar so easily. In all likelihood, they had to be switched on from inside the store. A milkman had to drive by every week to fill the bottles. The fresh milk indicated a recent visit. A milkman had to drive by every week to fill the bottles. The fresh milk indicated a recent visit.
Carl was used to strange phenomena. But a chunk of ice like this? As if an iceberg came out of the ground? That was a first. Prince? Carl found a surprise at every turn. Was the camera faulty, or was it a possible lead? It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. Carl felt that the store and its surroundings still held their secrets, and he didn't like to miss out. Something fell to the bottom of the box. Carl had no trouble recognizing his employer. He had been killed. There was no need to be a detective to figure that out. But only a detective could have noticed that the killer had to have been very close. That the fatal blow had been given before the victim even realized. An explosion suddenly occurred outside. Hate was in the air. Seems like some villagers barely tolerated each other. Let it be known you're nothing more than a brigand, a robber, a garbage horror, a viper, a leech, a monster. I'm holding a knife at my throat. Too bad for me, but... Carl was no electrician, but he could identify a wiring problem when he saw one. The note explained that the garage and the store couldn't be supplied with electricity at the same time.
open the cash register. Punch the price. Two numbers minimum. Press save. Turn the crank two times. Punch the machine if it doesn't work. Amastan, Webex Klondike. Quebec Klondike. Now that Quebec's economy is booming, north of Chibogamau area's population will soon reach 30,000 souls, among which thousands of happy families will be prospering thanks to the hard labor of their fathers, who will be contributing valiantly in expanding Quebec's national wealth, mines and petroleum, city hunting and fishing. True Canadian dream. Turn it into your dream now. Reality. The mines sector in full expansion. Did you know that since 1960 Canada tripled the amount of resource royalties it collects? Did you know that the country's true source of richness is lying under your very feet at this very moment? The building of our schools and our hospitals depends on minerals, exploiting our resources, the road to our future. The country of Afghanistan and its people wish to see you very soon. According to that log, it seemed like the whole village owed some money to the general store. Carl was far more interested in the bunch of nearby addresses he had just gotten his hands on, though. The snowstorm pummeled everything in its path. Carl was not surprised when he heard no tone. Carl knew that Gilles Lachance was in charge of the general store. That made him one of Hamilton's employees. A very angry employee, as Carl could plainly see. You know what, Hamilton? I have a frog in my throat. And when people have a frog in their throat, they do not take risks by going to work. Customers could catch it, right? I have a nice bag. Not to worry, I will have a nice doctor's note, which I'm going out to get right, right now. Sadly, in the meantime, I will have to close down the shop, unless you would like to come fill in for me. I wouldn't dare advise you, after all, you must know how it's done, since it's yours now. 
kind regards, your dedicated manager, Gilles. What could be inside that envelope? Carl was taken aback. He knew this address. It was said to be the address of the P.O. box for the Canadian Secret Service. Carl felt a chill down his spine and had a terrifying realization. If Hamilton was dead, then who was going to pay him? A radiator without power is as good as a wood stove without logs. Carl was no electrician, but he could identify a wiring problem when he saw one. The Polaroid, Carl's long-standing and faithful ally, has seen a share of husbands caught red-handed cheating. There's always something out there waiting to be snapped away. Carl wondered what the hell could that thing be? It looked like a man fossilized in ice. All of a sudden, Carl felt like he was pulled inside a world of dreams, a cold, unknown dimension. Somehow, self-control was slipping from his grasp.
appearances, this was a hunting log. Better yet, a war diary. The beast enjoys long slumbers. The sanctuary seems impregnable. Ice is in They need to exercise patience and wait for it to come home to drink like a hunter. The beast often invades the settlements bordering the lake. They terrorize the white people and never see it come. But they feel its presence. The cold breath grabbing it through the night. The beast excites the wolves. Makes them more aggressive. The one attacking me to cut his throat. The blade digging to its flesh. They need help. engraved numbers mean. A fresh path suddenly appeared before Carl. your frozen hands in hot water. What happened? Now at least he knew who the unfortunate man petrified in ice was. Gilles Lachance, the general store's manager himself. That had to be the worst parking job ever. Who was Carl to judge, though? It may be customary to park like that around these parts, or not. It was so cold, already Carl did not feel his toes anymore.
easier to investigate some windows measures and I end up with a dead body on my hands. Hamilton was murdered. I need to shed some light on this. What an upgrade. I saw some very weird ice earlier that seemed to be lit up from within. Never seen anything like it. I don't know the chemical process in which pictures reveal invisible prints. I have to say it looks entirely supernatural. Caribou footprints? Strange vision I had when I got near the eyes is puzzling. My investigator brain keeps focusing on the small detail. That may be pointless. A necklace with a number 739 engraved. What is that about? Staring intently at the controls won't be enough to make that lift budge. The poor thing was out of power.
note explained that the garage and the store couldn't be supplied with electricity at the same time. At long last, the crowbar was within Carl's grasp. Surely it would come in handy at some point. knew straight away where to find the infuriated Gilles Lachance. Any good investigation would have to start there. picture of the Magasin Lachance store, seemingly taken the day it was first opened. It feels frozen in time, from an era long forgotten. Amateur hunters showing some pride at having killed a nice pelted beast. With men like this roaming the area, wolves would become extinct within ten years, Carl thought. Jumping from that height was akin to tempting death. Perhaps that man on the snowmobile had seen enough of this world already.
a murder weapon. What was that doing there, Carl wondered. Hamilton must have been determined to keep some information secret to post this key. Shame he got unlucky. Everything made sense now. Poor Hamilton's denunciation was interrupted, and he figured it would be best to lock everything up and send the key to his correspondent, who would receive the box later on. Clever, but not enough. That's what happens to ordinary people playing spy. beginning to know the store and its surroundings like the back of his hand. The seeker had sought. Thought he would be dancing with the wolves. wondered how long he would have to endure this skin-stinging cold.
Thank you. 